What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? So, I, I just had a really weird encounter with some random-ass dude in the woods. I don't know why he was there, but apparently he thinks he has science by the hairy ball sack with some simple questions. So, I, I took a little bit of video of it. Luckily, he was recording himself, too. And so, we're going to see what these science questions are that totally refute the, the globe, is what he was talking about. I don't know. I was trying to find my way out of the woods, but he wanted to talk about other shit. Jesus fuck, where in the hell am I? Holy shit, I... Hold on. Let me get out my maps. What up, what up, what up? Oh, hey, dude! Uh, could you help me out? I need to find my way out of this fucking forest. Alright, how do we have a hundred degrees different only here where I live in Arizona all the way to Antarctic or the Arctic? How is it that we have 100 degrees at least? Like, you know, you can go farther on and it'll get colder. So how do we have that much difference in temperature if the sun is 93 million miles away? Sir, are you drunk? First of all, how can you go farther than the Arctic Circle and get progressively colder and colder? I mean, do you know how a globe works? Because that's what we live on, is a globe. Uh, I get that you probably don't think so because you sound like a dipshit. But uh, you keep going past the Arctic Circle and eventually you're going to get to a part of the Earth that will eventually turn into the sunlight and either get warmer or I guess it could stay colder? It'll probably get warmer than the Arctic Circle, though. But anyways, the answer to your pointless question here that I don't know why the fuck you brought it up out here in the middle of goddamn nowhere, but it's the axial tilt of the Earth. You see, the sun's rays, they hit the Earth at a specific angle, and that specific angle that it hits it at can determine how hot it actually gets. So you see, during the summer, the Earth is tilted towards the sun, making that angle of incidence very steep so that more of the energy from the photons are transferred to the surface of the Earth. While the portion of the Earth that is tilted away from the sun, those would have a greater angle of incidence so that the energy is spread out over a wider area. So, I mean, that's basically why seasons happen here on the Earth. Uh, the, the, to put it in your terms, that's why shit's hotter in Arizona and colder in Antarctica or the Arctic or whichever pole you want to fucking put yourself at. I mean, okay, so just think about shooting a wall with a gun. If you shoot a wall head on, that angle of incidence is going to be near zero. So it's going to be nearly like a perfect 90 degree angle that you hit it at. So more of the kinetic energy that's exerted by the bullet is going to be exerted directly upon the wall. But if you shoot the wall at an angle or something like that, you're going to ricochet, meaning that all of the energy isn't going to be pushed into the wall or exp expended upon the wall. It is going to hit the wall and bounce off, you know, preserving some of its kinetic energy to hit something else. I mean, that, that that's a, a good analogy for the purposes here of explaining how light hits the Earth and why some of the Earth is colder than other parts of the Earth. It's all about the angle at which the sunlight hits the surface of the Earth. Picture this. The moon landing? Sounds legit, right? They fucking, uh, uh, never told us that they were having to deal with a 2300 degree, at least, difference. Because the moon circles the Earth once a day. goes closest to the sun once a day. No one ever told us they were on a time limit. Because, uh... The sun could fry the shit out of them, or maybe they did. Who knows? But did they have the ability to uh, shield against 2,300 degrees difference? The, the moon really goes through 2,300 plus to 2,300 minus every single day? Wait, why the fuck are we talking about Apollo now? And the moon landings? I don't know, you seem to be very all over the place, but... 
Anyways, I don't know where you're getting this 2300 degree number. Like, literally, while you were talking, I was Googling it up on the phone, and I couldn't find anything about 2300 degrees concerning the moon. Because the moon's temperature actually bounces from 260 degrees Fahrenheit in direct sunlight and negative 280 degrees in not direct sunlight or in, in the shade in the dark side of the moon. So this whole 2300 difference here, this swing, actually, that would be 4600 degrees of sway <laughs> that you got going on here, doesn't actually make sense. So the Apollo program didn't have to take that particular number into account. Also, what do you mean these Apollo missions weren't on some kind of time limit or something? I mean, the Apollo program, they had to take a lot of different factors into account when they were planning the missions. One of those factors was what phase the moon was in at the time. Because, you see, lunar days and nights last around about two weeks. You see, the Apollo missions, they landed on the moon on the near-Earth-facing side of it because we have that mapped pretty well, especially after two previous uh, uh, lunar missions where they didn't land. It was like Apollo's, uh, what, 8 and 10, I think. Uh, they sufficiently mapped the near uh, the near-Earth side of the moon. So we have that mapped, and then they landed on the Sunrise Terminator line. Uh, it's a very fuzzy line on the moon. Generally, when you look up into the sky and you see the moon in phase, it's the part that differentiates the bright side of the moon from the dark side of the moon. So the Apollo astronauts, they landed in that kind of Goldilocks zone right there because it wouldn't be too hot and it wouldn't be too cold. All of this could have been done with a simple Google search. Like, I mean, as you were talking and bullshitting me, I looked it up and I found it in a few minutes. Figure it out, you guys. It's not 93 million miles away. I feel hot right now. If you're in Antarctica, you do not feel hot right now. If you were really dealing with the same sunlight that is from 93 million miles away, you guys see it? See it right by my head? What? Okay, we're bouncing all over the place now. Why are we back to, like, the sun and shit? Also, did you just say that it was 19 million miles away? Because I agree, the sun is at 19 million miles away, but it is 93 million miles away. And we have multiple different methods in order to determine that, including parallax measurements from the face of the Earth. But, hey man, look, I don't have time for this bullshit right now. Like, I'm lost in the woods, and you're obviously not going to fucking help me because you seem to be lost in general. So, I'm going to go. You stay away from, like, me, small children, young adults, any... I mean, go go to night school or something. I don't know. Figure yourself out. I'll see you later. Oh, man, he then that was a weird fucking encounter, right? Just randomly out in the woods, trying to find my way around. Nope, Flat Earth Heroes got to come out there and d do his whole spiel about the sun and shit. I don't understand. Why are you walking around the woods randomly coming up to strangers and talking to them about bullshit? Anyways, if you guys like this video, go down below. Let me know in the comments. Uh, while you're down there, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, you know, if you like this kind of dumb shit. And uh, I guess just stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.